What's up guys, it's Lou from Unbox Therapy and today I've got a speed test for you. This is the 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display that I recently unboxed and featured on the channel. If you haven't seen that unboxing video, I definitely recommend you go and check it out. I'll link it down in the description so you can go see it. Now the purpose of this video is to find out just how fast this system is and I'm going to be using a couple of different tools to try and figure that out. The first one is called Geekbench and this is probably the most popular benchmarking tool in the Mac world. And rather than make you sit through the entire process, it does take a few minutes to get a benchmark figure once it's all done. I'm going to speed forward and we're going to jump to the eventual Geekbench score and you might be surprised at the results. I actually was myself but then as I gave it a little bit more thinking, I realized why. So here is the Geekbench score. It's 6733, 6733. And this is an overall score representative of a no number of different characteristics that are tested in Geekbench. As I scroll down here, you can see it gets significantly more complicated. You've got floating point performance, memory performance, stream performance, etc. There's a number of different characteristics. And rather than get too complicated with it, let's concentrate on the main figure, 6733. 733, which is representative of how everything comes together, the whole system performance. And then when we compare that to some other popular Macs, these are popular Mac benchmark scores here, Geekbench scores, I should say. And you'll see as I scroll down, there's Mac Pros, there's iMacs, there's MacBook Pros, and there's even Mac Minis that we have to pass to find where this new system is going to fit in in terms of an overall score. Now, at first, it's kind of surprising. You think, wow, this is a $1,700 machine at base specification, which is the model that I'm testing here. And the reason it scores lower than some less expensive machines is because it's got to push an incredible amount of pixels out to this retina display, and it lacks the dedicated graphics that the 15-inch MacBook Pro with retina display and regular 15-inch MacBook Pro have on board. So the next benchmarking tool that I'm going to run this system through is called Cinebench, and if you're unfamiliar with this tool, it's going to be really GPU intensive. It's going to throw 3D imagery, moving imagery much like a video game at your system and figure out just how fast your system can render it back and the exact FPS that it does it at. And of course, like I said earlier, the fact that this system doesn't have its own dedicated graphics card means you're going to see a performance hit in this particular test. There's a secondary part as well. Cinebench also tests your CPU by using this two-dimensional image, super high resolution version, and rendering it each little box at a time. So you're going to get a CPU figure, a CPU score also also out of this particular benchmarking tool. So once it's all completed, you get two scores. The OpenGL figure, once again, very graphics intensive. You can see here, you've got 16.92 FPS that this system is capable of, and the CPU performance is 2.82 points. That doesn't mean much right now. I'll tell you what the 15 inch MacBook Pro with Retina is capable of in a quick moment. You can see this is the base spec for the 13 inch at 2.5 gigahertz and two cores. I really wish there was a quad core option for for the 13 inch Pro because then it could deliver scores much closer to the 15 inch model with an OpenGL score of 34.8 FPS and a CPU score of 6.12. So as you can see, it's much faster for graphics intensive tasks as you might expect having that extra processing power and of course the dedicated graphics. If you're into multimedia, you're definitely gonna wanna look at the 15 inch over the 13, but don't get me wrong, this is still a magnificent machine when you consider the form factor, the size and weight and the beauty of the screen screen, you can kind of accept some of those drawbacks comparative to the 15-inch model. Actually, this is a good time to remind you guys I'm having a big giveaway this Sunday. I'll link the giveaway video down in the description. You just saw it up there on my channel page. If you haven't seen that giveaway video, you should check it out. And one more thing, actually, that I want to talk about. You're looking at my Instagram photos here. Some of you guys follow me on Instagram, and I've, I had a cool idea. I've got a lot of stuff lying around here, small items that don't make sense for big giveaways, and I'm thinking I might come up with a creative way of giving them away way on Instagram or Twitter. Anyways, if you don't follow me yet on Instagram, I'm Unbox Therapy, as you might imagine. That's my name. And on Twitter, at Unbox Therapy. Follow me in those two places. I'm going to come up with a creative way to give, a, give away a bunch of smaller items, phone cases and things like that. So stick around and find out what those are on those two social networks. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this speed test of the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina Display. These are the figures. These are the facts. And I'm just making them clear for you guys. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to leave a like and favorite down 
down below as it does help out a bunch. And as I said before, big giveaway is happening tomorrow, or actually today now because I'm up late. So Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Check out the giveaway video in the description so you don't miss out. See you guys soon. All right, later.